Hello, I'm David Ruzik, Illinois Energy Prof. And I'm here today to tell you about whether you can shoot a lightning bolt across a room. Now this is clearly a fun topic and it grew out of a, a class I was teaching on you know, plasma engineering and plasma physics. And one of the students in there, graduate student, has a website. And his website looks at the science behind fun things in video and science fiction and video games. And in particular, we were interested in Call of Duty, there's a rifle that shoots plasmas and you can shoot zombies with it. And of course, we were wondering, and he was wondering, what it would really take to make that kind of gun. So, here is my gun. All right, I bought this uh, on the um, Amazon. <laughs> I buy everything. All right, and it is a Tesla coil in the circuit, and it does need to be plugged in. And we'll come back to this in a bit. But the thing that it shoots is a plasma. And so I need to tell you what a plasma is. And a plasma is a hot ionized gas. So let's say we have a gas molecule, and it has a nucleus, and it has electrons, more or less, going around it. And an ionized gas is where I put enough energy into this so that I have just the ion and I have just the electron. And they are free to move about. This is the fourth state of matter. You've got a solid, you warm it up like water. You warm it up, you get a liquid. You warm that up, you get a gas, fills the whole room. You uh, warm this up a bit more and you can break apart the molecules and then break apart the atoms into charged particles. And because this one is negative and this one is positive, when I have a plasma, it doesn't fill up the whole room. It can kind of hold itself together because of those opposite charges. Now, a lot more about plasmas and lightning is on a video I'd made some years ago that you can be able to follow up if you want more of this. But for right now, Let's concentrate on plasma in the form of lightning. All right, so we have clouds. And again, a lot more details in that other video, but the clouds end up having a large charge, and so they are going to have a very high, many millions of volts charge on them. All right, megavolts of charge. And we have ground down here somewhere. All right, here is the ground. Now, you might think, boom, just ionizes all the air, making it a plasma. But that's not quite it. First, what happens is we have some kind of ionization, maybe cosmic rays comes, makes a few charges, and the cloud makes what's called a leader, a negative leader. Right, and then this, you may have another ionization cosmic ray event happened here, and it goes this way. And so this voltage that was in the cloud, right, is now transferred closer and closer and, and maybe closer and then closer. And when it gets very close to the ground, this voltage difference is now between the cloud, well, it's between this tip of the negative leader. You don't see anything yet and the ground. And now you can actually have a positive leader come up, some type of positive charge strikes coming up, and at some point, crack, you get ionization. And since this was the charge channel, right, this is what lights up in the sky. And you can see on this picture more carefully, you can see some leaders that might not have uh, gone anywhere. Right? They never reached all the way to the ground. Those will light up too because now the charge will all flow wherever there's an ionized gas channel. This lightning bolt is not something you want to be hit by. So how do we make the lightning bolt with a machine? Well, the best machine to use for this is a Tesla coil. 
I might want to point out that, that up here, okay, this is a wire that's connected to part of the machine. And at the end of the wire, the lightning bolt we're making are all those things coming out from the right. Well, that looks uh, pretty good, but you wonder what's in all this stuff. It's not an electrical engineering course, but I got to tell you just a little bit. First, we start with AC power from the wall. And if you want a big spark, you better go to some 400 or 480 volt line coming in. And then, once we have that line, um, we have a transformer. And this transformer here transforms the voltage up to something like 15 kilovolts. There's a little thing there marked SG, and that's actually a spark gap. And a spark gap works that once the voltage really has built this much up, and you see there's a capacitor there to store it, it will actually close that switch. It'll make a little lightning bolt itself closing that switch. And then the power circulates, right? It goes between this capacitor and this inductor, and it circulates and circulates. And that changing current at a very high frequency, those types of frequencies might be in the 20 to 40 kilohertz range. And that's why these things make music, by the way, because you adjust this with a few adjustments, and that is in the audio pitch range. That's an aside. This coil here, this primary coil, energizes a secondary coil. And this has a lot of windings. These are the things you see, this fine wire that winds and winds and winds and winds around here, because we're going to up the voltage from 15 kilovolts to, I don't know, maybe 300 kilovolts. We have to store that somewhere. There's a, effectively a capacitance to ground, and you often see a torus type of shape uh, on the top of one of these, because it's a large surface area to hold a lot of charge, and it can be discharged quickly. And once this voltage gets up high enough, then boom, you get a plasma through the air. But this didn't shoot anything. It just kind of went everywhere. So how do you aim the Tesla coil? Well, if you don't, it just goes to the nearest object. Nearest object with ground behind it, right? Somewhere there's a, a girder that ends up being connected to literally the ground a pipe into the ground, something that can dissipate all that charge away. Um, here, there was probably some things in the ceiling, so it went up to the ceiling. But if you intentionally want to have it go someplace, you actually make a grounded rod. And you see there's that black rod up here. Okay, That is a grounded rod, and the Tesla coil was able to take a bolt straight to it. So we know in principle how to aim. Let's see if it really works. Let's go back to my gun. Now, I'm going to pull the trigger. There we go. Indeed, we've got a Tesla coil shooting into space. But what if I bring up a grounded target? Indeed, there we go. I have a lightning bolt shooting at the grounded target. How far away can I get? too far depends how much power that I have. Well, what if instead of a uh, nice metal grounded target, we shoot it at some living uh, tissue, like an apple? All right, here we go. Ah, I got the apple. Is that good for the apple? Well, if you look uh, closely, you can see all those white dots. Those weren't there when I started. Um, in fact, earlier in practicing, I uh, hit one spot all the time and had a nice little black spot in there now. Um, you know, you don't want to shoot at living tissue, like your hand. Have I done it to my hand? Sure. Did it hurt? Nah, a little tingle, but just because it doesn't hurt doesn't mean it didn't hurt you. 
and more importantly, the reason you don't want to shoot a Tesla coil at a human being is because it's connected to the wire to the world. And if something goes wrong inside of here, you might imagine that you could be shooting or touching a live wire a, a right to a person. So don't shoot a person with this. Now, it wasn't that cool. So we've got a gun, and uh, we know what it's made of, plasma, and how to get it there. But will it jump from zombie to zombie? Probably not. But it could if the first zombie wasn't grounded and then the next zombie along the line was grounded. You see, here's a great example. This guy, he's got a uh, metal rod in one hand and a metal rod in the other, and the lightning bolt looks like it goes through him and then eventually to this big cage out here, which is grounded. I am sure this guy has a nice thick wire under his shirt going between those two um, because otherwise he'd be dead. <laughs> you don't want to get hit by a lightning bolt. Uh, but that's a perfect example that we can go from something to something else if they're both grounded. But, but of course, you also have to have enough power. So let's do a little math. How much power do you need? A lot. 11 kilowatts if you want to go about 10 feet, 3 meters, uh, and that will give you the voltage at the tip at about half a megavolt. You want to go 30 feet, about 9, 10 meters, you're going to need 25 kilowatts of power, and um, that'll probably get you at a megavolt. All right? It's a lot. It's a lot. The key, of course, is how long do you want to stay on, because remember, um, power equals energy over time. So if you want a 25 kilowatt powered blast to last for one second, you need 25 kilojoules, the unit of energy. And this means you'd have to store it, especially if you don't want your gun plugged into the wall. Um, if I want, say, a 10-second uh, burst, that will go 30 feet, multiply by 10, and we need 250 kilojoules of a voltage source that can discharge extremely completely in those 10 seconds. I have one of those in my lab. I have this capacitor bank, and notice it, it's a long capacitor bank. It'll go all the way down to there and from the floor to the ceiling. And all that fully charged is your 250 kilojoules. Probably not a little tiny bulb you can stick into the side of a machine. And that's what you need to know about shooting lightning across a room. And if you want more detail, then take a look at these various videos and have a great day.